Okay, so uh, I hope you can all hear me and see me. Uh, we had a bit of a technical glitch a while back, and I apologize for that. And um, so I'm here today, and I'm going to just cut to the chase the the topic that is in everybody's mind that what happens uh, at the end of this pandemic and uh, how do we learn to live with it how do we learn to live post it and uh, a, a lot of my friends architects colleagues clients it's the same discussion everywhere how is it going to impact how we live so it's a, there's a wide uh, thought process on this and i'm going to start with the widest which is that is this a whole paradigm shift and are we going to think about or i think actually i agree that we should think about a more decentralized way of living i think um for me i think for years the fact that we have been attracted to focus and gather in cities like in large cities high density cities with high mi- uh, dependence on migrant populations uh, is is not proving to be the way to live now and uh, there has been talk for the longest time about an ur- about an urban design and urban planning approach that talks about township satellite towns people yes they might move away from their villages from rural environments to more uh, for a more industrialized livelihood um a more uh, a semi rural uh, livelihood uh, but these have to now happen closer to where the home is a uh, high density of cities with with millions and millions of people is not going to be the way forward so that brings into question a lot of recent um uh, recent possibilities uh that have been developed in the last two decades or three decades which have been about uh, high high density development transit oriented development we've built metros we've given higher emphasis on both sides of metros um they've almost become destinations or uh, and people attractors and um we've been we've been talking about place making where thousands of people can uh, cohabit the same open spaces the same office towers uh, the same metro lines um uh, you know 50 50 floors up and five floors down under the ground uh, i think we will probably at the, in the aftermath of this pandemic uh look back at more 50s 60s planning in um in india especially where we were looking at low rise high density we were not so reliant on vertical transportation um so and there'll be smaller townships in some ways perhaps uh, fostering a more intimate community life uh, which is more about neighborhood uh, and i think we might have to just revisit all of those concepts um i also think that uh, whilst whilst there was a lot of talk about a decentralized way of work when the entire onset of um, digital communication began but i think we've really learned how to do that during this pandemic and uh thus i think decentralized living using the digital medium to communicate is going to create a new way of working as well now if i was to, i've been thinking a lot about like the different kind of work i we do at morphogenesis and i've thought of how each of our discussions is going to change so here here is a here is a one of my discussions uh so if we want to for example think about how is residential uh, design going to change so we've talked about high density low rise how about that every every um child every adult living in a family is going to require a place that transforms into an office or into a workplace so focus is probably in my opinion going to move away from enriching a house by adding uh, more luxury materials more expensive um uh, sort of interior uh, deco but instead more transformable spaces does the dining room become a conference uh, table uh, does it become one where uh, where the television becomes a video conferencing tool through the day and then a family entertainment tool in the evening uh, 
do people need privacy from each other to live say or do they need privacy from each other to work so is it still going to be uh, drawing room family lounge and bedroom 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 or is it going to be uh, drawing room slash uh, conference room bedroom slash workspace so <coughs> so uh, i think where space allows there will be a lot of multitasking in smaller residential uh, homes i think common areas will turn into um, uh, sort of shared workplaces Uh, which one leases out for a set of number of hours and i think we are going to be more focused um on choosing to buy apartments or rent apartments where we know there's a workplace available for us so if it's not at home it's near enough to home i i've thought about how is commercial office space going to change is it going to be about gathering a large number of people in open plan offices as we have been doing um and a lot of positive social impact has happened due to open workplace but anyway there was already a lot of uh, noise starting about the noise of an open workplace and now if uh, uh, conferencing over uh, a screen is going to be at least occupying part of the time for majority of the people open plan is not going to work so we have to rethink how, what is a workspace like uh and is it a workspace that uh kind of multitask for different people and does different things at different times is it a series of business center like rooms which you come to and you use for a certain duration of work till you return to your other workplace at home uh So, so I think there's a lot that architects, interior designers, workplace designers have to think about how people will work. Uh, I know for a fact that we are going to move away from the large gathering of people. You know, we went from ten thousand at the start of my career. I was designing ideal four plates, which were ten to twelve thousand square feet. Then came IT boom, and then it became minimum fifty thousand square feet. Then it became IT campuses where each service uh, this bring provided by a discrete set of people who coexist in the same building but do not share the same space. So there has been, I think there will be a return back to the smaller workspace. And one, uh, uh, the other thing is that I think we are not going to be moving so far away from our homes. We are not going to choose to live in one city and then travel to another, like we do, for example, in Delhi and uh, and its uh, neighboring cities that have come up in the last two three decades, like Gurgaon, Faridabad, Noida. Uh, I think people travel between any of these NCR cities quite easily for work. But given the fact that work will be at two locations, home and work, I think the commute will lessen. The commute to work will lessen, so they will. uh either some workplaces will come closer into the city and there will be a reemergence of smaller uh district center kind of uh locales uh or people themselves will move their homes closer to where the work is but i think uh use of public transport which got a different sort of coloring in the last um sort of uber days and uber and ola days have given public transport a different meaning uh i worry that we will be going back to our own personal um modes of transport hence we will be whilst we will be looking at conserving fuel we will be looking uh but we will move away from sharing and uh this is something that is a cause of concern to me that uh i thought we were going to move away from um we were going to move away from needing a lot of cars I think we may might be going back into uh requiring more cars because everybody will want the safety of their own uh, sort of want to be in control. And and the so the word control takes yeah actually that is it we will all want to be more in control of our environment and therefore more responsible for the design of our environment more responsible for how we communicate in that environment. Um then i thought a lot about a lot of typologies which i fear will disappear 
um, I think as we go to trusting ourselves the most, we will next move to trusting our immediate community, fa commun families and then communities. So I see a resurgence of local community spaces. I see local community clubs becoming important. Um, I see cinema halls not being important because one is not in control. So you don't know who's been there, you don't, and you don't know how sanitized the environment is. Now, of course, there will also be emergence of better and better sanitization, and the, the things will be marketed based on how sanitized they are. But I have a sense of the fact that entertainment will move to uh, a neighborhood level uh, because you know your neighborhood. Uh, I, I want to share my experience with our local RWAs. Um, so for example, uh, local RWAs are now uh, have common chats. They're all talking about which gate to shut, which gate to open. They are talking about a uh, more sanitized way of walking. They are self-policing um, yeah, the, the regimen to be followed by um, their locality. Uh, communities are self-policing and, and they're taking very positively to self-policing. So I think the trust factor in the local community will determine a lot of about the shape of architecture to come. Um, I So yeah, I think I've shared a lot of ideas, but I think uh, another one which is really, con really bothering me uh, at one level but also making me happy is about the shape of educational facilities so we know that any amount of educational facility that we have built uh, in terms of infrastructure of education facility physical infrastructure it has never been enough there is always a need um, and uh, to have more schools more colleges and these schools and colleges have been uh, gathered have been designed around the notion of gathering 40 or 50 or 60 students together to, uh, to impart instruction. Um, the last few months have shown us all that the world is operating now on remote instruction. It may not be the happiest situation for some, but there's also a large level of outreach of education that has happened now. So we've always talked about using the digital medium for education and they have uh, been for the longest time, there have been a lot of online programs for the same, but I don't think they've had membership uh, or participation of the kind that they have now. So something that a lot of us uh, did not uh, accept as, um, as a real possibility, but just something you dabble in in an emergency or you do as a hobby, or you do as a pastime, or you do in the absence of physical uh, physical premises-based education, has actually now become a reality. Um, so I think I see uh, schools and colleges becoming boundary-less in some ways. I see that, for example, if I want to learn Spanish, uh, I don't think I'll go to a Spanish school any longer. I think I will probably have a Spanish teacher from Spain teach me the same thing online. Um, so what will uh, start happening perhaps is uh, universities and schools will decentralize and they are the most likely in my opinion to become online resources. Uh, and what will be in the purview of design is actually the environments of these, uh, of these places where people impart instruction from. So, uh, I think this is, hang on a minute, I think somebody is sending me a message, which I think you may be a question. No. Okay. So, um, so I think uh, this is going to impart, uh, this is going to look at education in a different way. We are looking at socializing in a different way. We are looking at rebuilding community strength and therefore reinforcing community-based architecture. Uh, we are perhaps going to be more locally reliant and unfortunately I see the emergence of personal transportation back again. And on that note, I want to ask if there are any questions, then please any of my uh, 
viewers who by the way i'm very thankful for for logging in to listen despite the technical glitches i would be grateful if there were any questions coming in or or suggested topics that you have had some thoughts on i would be happy to address them right now Okay, so I've added a couple of people. Okay, so um, now I think I've covered a large range of subjects and I'm going to leave this conversation at this point and uh, I hope I have given uh, some insight into thoughts that some of you would have probably already had a lot of these thoughts. Um, and I hope I get a chance to hear from you all. Uh, I'm happy to receive any messages. I'm happy to carry on this discussion online. Um, and uh, thank you for logging in today. Thanks. Bye-bye. And stay safe.